Hello, I'm Pastor Paul. Welcome to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. We're glad you're here. We know that you can't always be in worship with us, so we're glad to provide the sermons from our weekly services. We hope that you will find hope and inspiration as we have in Jesus Christ. And now, here's this week's message. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin and their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them, and he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. If you hear nothing else today besides praise God from the children's message and that God does not give up on us, then this has been a fruitful time. They say that you can never really go home again. Have you heard that phrase? You can never really go home again. There's something to it, I think. You can go back for a visit, right? And you may even move back to your hometown. But something happens between the time you leave and the first time that you return. Things change. People change. You change. People remember you for who you were, not for who you are. I realized this a few years back when I was invited to preach at my home congregation. Larissa and I visited St. Petersburg, Florida after being away for a few years. And as we drove down some of the streets that were familiar to us, and we looked for some familiar landmarks and familiar shops along the way, restaurants, even trees, we marveled as we looked around because many of our favorite places were gone. (laughs) New things had sprung up, empty lots, We're now filled with buildings and everything around us seemed to just kind of press in on the street. We longed to see something, anything familiar that would comfort us. We drove past our old homes. We had three of them when we were in St. Pete. And each one in its own way had changed. New people lived there, new landscaping, new roofs. Trees were missing. New trees were growing in places where they hadn't grown before. What a shame, we thought that things couldn't still be the way we remembered them. Surely, we thought, going back to our home church will make everything all right. Funny thing, many of the people there had changed too. Many people had moved on, new people had joined. Those who knew us remembered us as the people we were before we left. And I was amazed by comments from people that said things like, I didn't know you could preach. And, wow, so you're a pastor now? In our gospel reading today, Mark, from Mark, Jesus has returned home. You may recall that Jesus was in Capernaum, a place along the Sea of Galilee. Remember, most of the first part of the gospel of Mark happens seaside. Home is Nazareth for Jesus, further inland, so we move away from the water. It has been a part of just about every story. And Jesus, on this day, goes to the local synagogue because it is the Sabbath. And this would have been pretty normal for him and for his followers. The synagogue experience is more of a conversational church experience, not like a church service that we might have 
reading from scriptures would lead to different rabbis, different people sharing their opinions and insights about the faith and what God might be saying through these words. So Jesus, as we've heard him before, well, he, he gets up and he starts to speak. And the people are astounded by what he says. They marvel at his insights and his wisdom. So Jesus begins his time at home by being the local kid made good. Right? The people have heard the stories of his deeds of power, his healing, his casting out of demons. And oh, by the way, the kid can preach too? Alrighty then. So what happens? How do we go from local kid makes good to prophets are not without honor except in their hometown? It's a pretty quick switch, isn't it? Well, sometimes not being able to go home again looks like being trapped in stereotypes. Sometimes it looks like being dismissed because failing to do so means someone else loses something in the exchange. And that's what's happening here. In Jesus' time, the power, the social currency of the day, rested with one's honor or lack of honor. To be honored is something sought after in Jesus' hometown and in the culture around Nazareth. Honor is like a possession, a thing to be gained, a thing to hold over someone else. If I have honor and you have less than me, then I'm superior to you. Does that make sense? Are you with me? I'm better than you. You have less honor. Or to put it another way, you have more shame than I do. And honor and shame, these powerful pieces of social currency in that day, are a zero-sum game. That is, if one person gains honor in a society, then someone else necessarily loses some. You see what I'm saying? Gain and loss. So if I have a place of high honor, high regard, and you move to town, and people like you, and you have more money than I do, and you have more possessions my honor might be lessened because they may afford you more honor than they do to me. Are you with me? Okay, a few nods. I'm a little concerned about the rest of you, but we're hoping. All right, it's important. In other cultures around the world, the same system is in place, except that it may be based on something like gender. All right, you've probably heard this. Think about cultures that place a less value on women or place women's value far below men. Have you heard of any of those stories? Right? So someone in the crowd, someone who had something to lose if Jesus received more honor than was due to him as a child of their town, lobs the first insult. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? Isn't this the guy who built our benches? Who fixed our table when it was wonky? Isn't this his family that we all know so well? That's all around here. A carpenter would have had a certain position of honor in the community, okay? A certain amount of honor was due to a carpenter, but by this time, The time that this story is happening, many carpenters would have been itinerant. That is, they would have had to travel around to find enough work to be able to pay for the food for their family. They wouldn't have been necessarily stationary like the town carpenter over in, you know, house number three. And so with that came a reduction in the amount of honor that they would receive. Because after all, who would take off and leave their home unprotected? Note that this person did not say, is this not Joseph's son? But instead chose to say Jesus was the son of Mary. Was that a slight against Jesus? After all, Joseph said he was not the father. Do you see how this can work? Or rather, not work? It's a, it's a mean system. <laughs> it's just not a good system. Okay? So Jesus returns the insults. The people would have been very familiar with Jesus quoting the proverb that he did. Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown. And then he doubled down and tripled down on it by saying the other things. Because Jesus had had enough. 
By dishonoring Jesus, the people of his hometown have shown their lack of faith. They're moved from being amazed by Jesus' teaching and wisdom to mocking him to keep him in his place meant that they could not accept that God might be doing something through their hometown boy, especially a lowly carpenter. In our own country right now, we are, it seems, calling out others whom we refuse to give honor. We too, it seems, fear what might come from the ideas of someone who believes differently than us. Imagine if you can that in our hometown, if Dubuque is your hometown or wherever your hometown is, women didn't have the right to vote until 98 years ago next month. Think about that. Until 54 years ago, our schools were segregated, and along with them, most of the society in the South. White people thought they could not afford to honor people who were different than them. There are others struggling for equality yet today. Do you fear giving honor to others? Would you cringe if someone who looked different than you moved into the house across the street? Do you honor those who come from another country, those who believe differently than you? I'm sure you can think of many people who are different than you, right? Are you willing to offer them honor, even if it means making them an equal with you? Jesus knows the lack of faith in his hometown. Jesus knows that it is this lack of faith that will keep them from receiving what God offers through their hometown kid made good. Yet Mark goes on to tell us that in spite of the lack of faith shown by Jesus' hometown, he still goes about teaching in the villages around there and curing the sick. They marvel at that, that they made it seem like Jesus curing the sick was no big deal. And yet, what a huge deal. Jesus doesn't give up on the people of that area but instead sends out the apostles, those 12 chosen disciples, to proclaim the message begun by John the Baptist that all should repent. (coughs) Repent. So how might God be calling you to honor others? How might God be calling you to honor those with whom you disagree? How might we learn to get along better with our neighbor just a little bit more these days? As people of faith, we believe that that which we hold in common is greater than anything that can try to tear us apart. God's love in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins is stronger than anything, stronger than anything that we might hold as a difference. As people of faith, we believe that God does not give up on us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. If you're ever in the Dubuque land area, please join us for worship. Visit our website at www.lordoflife.online to learn more about service times and about our vision for serving God and our community. God bless you.